Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and we are beyond thrilled to have the privilege of hosting the remarkable Debbie Adams on our podcast. Prepare to be inspired and uplifted as we delve into the depths of matters that truly matter to, and touch the heart. Debbie's insights and exper experiences are truly captivating. Her ability to speak directly to the heart and tap into the emotions that drive us is simply extraordinary. Through her heartfelt stories and her profound wisdom, she brings a unique perspective that you will have to, that will reevaluate re your life and help you redetermine what your values, your priorities, and what the power of the following your heart really means to you yourself as a person. So join us now as Debbie is going to tell us a little about herself. She's going to tell us a little about her new book that's coming up and what really drove her in this direction of life. So Debbie, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Hello. A lot of y'all have seen me on here before and my name is Debbie Adams and I love to read books and I love to write books and um, my love for books is the um, force behind um, you know me writing the books and I feel like God has started that journey a long time ago when I was growing up and just loving to learning to live read books and so my um current book that is going to be launched in a few days it is it is going to be amazing and it talks about the heart and it's um the name of it is straighten your crown navigating life's challenges with grace and it talks about the crown in your heart, not the crown in your head. And I felt like God laid it on my heart to write this book. And I struggle sometimes myself with things that are in my heart. And through writing this book, God, you know, he touched my life in you know, different areas and made me realize that I need to look at myself also. And so whatever is in our heart, whether it's, you know, bad attitudes or whatever, it will come out in our actions, how we react to others and our words. Like you might be you know, having a bad attitude about something and then somebody will, you know, come in your pathway, do something that irritates you, might not even be a big thing, but then you'll just flare off. And, you know, I've done that before. I have to be honest, I have done that before. And we have to be very careful about our heart and make sure that what's in our heart is true, is pure, and always be asking God, you know, I am, and we should always be asking God, you know, to renew our heart. Um, like that Bible verse says, renew in me a clean heart, O Lord. And that's the purpose behind this book. Um, and the title, Straighten Your Crown, God gave me that while I was talking to a friend outside. And that's what, and we were actually talking about, you know, situations that how people were acting. Yeah. And then, you know, after I got through talking, God revealed to me, you need to write a book about that and let others see how they can change their life by changing what's in their heart. Yes. So that's how all that started. And it should be uh, launched on Amazon here in um, a few days. I, I think it's remarkable because I think, you know, in this life, we really have to listen to the heart in a world where you see so much anger and hatred and so many things going on. You know, if we only listen to what our heart says and we learn to really focus on what the heart is telling us, not what the mind is telling us or not what the people around us are telling us mm -hmm. and not following what other people are doing, but literally, literally listening to what our heart says and what our heart wants us to do. And, you know, what our, our, 
our spiritual upbringing, where, however you were raised, what, you know, because I always believe in the higher ground, the higher spirits, you know, God, whoever, whoever you choose to believe in, but there, there's always someone there who is, is guiding you along the way. And, you know, I, I believe it all starts in the heart. I believe it's really, it's not the brain, but it's the heart that really controls us in, in my sense. Mm -hmm. Yes, I totally agree on that. Now, and and also, um, I mean, the your heart, you think about, you know, the way God created our bodies and our heart, you know, us as humans, we think about our heart. Yeah, you know, our heart needs to stay pumping. So we're trying to keep all of our art arteries, you know, cleaned out and all of that stuff. And a lot of times, I don't think people realize that you can also put bad things in your heart too. Not, yes. not things that you're going to eat that will clog up your arteries. But if you're around in my book talk, we will talk about when it gets launched, you know, it you'll see as you read it, that it's in there. And when you put negativity in your body, mm -hmm. that's, almost i'll say that's almost as bad as a clogged up artery yeah. because when because i've been around negative people and you know the sun can be shining and they will have something negative to say about that it's just everything is you know neg and i'm sure you've been around people like that as well but um yeah that's that's one one part that is in my book and um and then I talk about you know I talk about the struggles of life and you know everybody goes through struggles and I talk about how um you know I think one chapter is called blossoming through struggles and I talk about you know how you can overcome being you know negative and worrying and all of that and I talk about um having confidence in whatever you do in this life and you know whether you know you want to be um you know a podcaster or whether you just want to be a simple clerk that works at Walmart right. whatever you do in this life you're going to have struggles but I talk about how you know whatever it is you can have the confidence that you need to where your heart will glow yeah. and people will see your heart glowing because it will be, it will be you, it will be your persona. Right. And that's, that's the main, that's the main reason I think that God wanted me to write this book is mm -hmm. because there are so many depressed and, you know, downtrodden people because of the way, you know, our world is right now with a bad right. economy, a bad world in general. And so um, that, yeah, that's the main, I think, I do believe that's the main reason God had me to write that book. I think, you know, it's so important what you said, you know, many people don't realize, but I say, I said in many of, of, of the podcast shows that 70% of illnesses are caused by stress. And when you have negativity in your life, that causes stress. And, you know, if you ever notice when you're around people who are negative, that, you know, after you've spoken with them, you feel like, like a vacuum has sucked the energy out of you. Mm -hmm. Because when you have people with negative energy, that ne negative energy goes into you. And re realize it or not, it affects you. Because people don't realize it, but the whole world is run by energy. If there was no energy... There would be no world. There would be no grass. There would be, you know, nothing would be able to formulate itself. So, you know, and we as humans are run by energy. So mm -hmm. if you have negative energy in the room and that negative and you're in that room, that negative energy is going to affect you. And, you know, I always think that it's so important to really focus on who we surround ourselves 
and really, you know, take a look at the life we have around ourselves and try to formulate the best type of life possible. Like, how do you feel about that? Because I'm sure that when you had negative people in your life, what did you do as a person to, you know, because sometimes these people are part of our lives on a daily basis. Sometimes we see them often. Sometimes, you know, they, they really should make a decision. Do we want them in our lives? But what did you go about doing yourself to help yourself stay around positive people that were going to influence you and elevate you to a higher level in life? I have had negative people in my family, um, you know, different aunts, uncles, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I've also had negative people in places that I've worked before. And like you said, they will drain your energy. And it's hard when you, you know, are very close to a person, it's hard to get away from them. But then on the other hand, you have to realize if I don't get away from them, if I do not put some distance between them, then all of my positivity is going to get pushed to the bottom. Right. Because I'm, I've always been a positive person. It, it doesn't matter, you know, if it's six feet of snow on the ground. Right. And, and to use that as an example, you know, I'll find something positive, you know, about that. Yeah. And I, you know, that, that, that's just me. That's, you know, how I've always been, but negative people, they have, gotten me you know downtrodden before and then I had to pray to God and it's just like let me get get all of this negativity away from me and right. so then you know you have to focus on the good stuff what's, right. po what's positive about the day what's positive about your life right um you know what do you love to do what you know makes you smile what energizes you and, you know, I've had to tell friends, you know, hey, if you're going to be, you know, that negative, you know, and depressing, I don't need to be around you. And, you know, and a lot of times right. they will, they will stop as a little bit of the negativity, but uh, that, you know, that's, that's how I handle it. You know, I'll, I'll try to get them to think more positively. And then on the other hand, if I can't do that, then I will just, you know, get away from them. I'll distance myself from them in order for to keep myself healthy. Right. Yes. So. No, I think that's a great answer because I think sometimes we have to make decisions in our lives because when we have negative people around us, it tends to pull us down and it could interfere with your own life and your own your own surrounding of being able to move forward in life. You know, when they're keep mm -hmm. pulling you, they're pulling you back and you're trying to move forward. And, mm -hmm. you know, and it could be very draining on the body. So, you know, it's, it's, it, it's really important to really, you know, learn how to distance yourself from negative energy and really focus on being around people that you know are going to, are going to serve you and give you that positive energy that you need. Now, when you talk about the crown, like, you know, a lot of times we think of the crown as, as a spiritual, the top, the chakras, think of it as the, you know, the spiritual crown. Now, when you think, when you talk about the crown as the heart, like go, can you explain that to us a little bit? God is the one that gave me that idea. And I had to really search in my heart and you know and ask him to give me wisdom on that because it took me a few minutes too to figure that one out because you know and I talk about it in my book you know how most people they will talk about you know like the queen of England and she's got she wears the crown and you know and all the princes and princesses and all of that and but it's not like a a physical crown, but we have the Holy Spirit for us that know Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. in our hearts. Right. And 
that when I was asking God to show me wisdom, you know, is like, how can a crown be in your heart? Right. That's what's in your heart. So the Holy Spirit is your crown. I got you. And yes. And for those that don't know Jesus, you know, they need to get their crown, but they can, they can learn from my book as well, mm -hmm. because I do talk, you know, I talk, you know, a little bit about, you know, Jesus and how you, you know, get the Holy Spirit in your heart and stuff like that. Right. And so, you know, there is information on how to get your crown. Right. But yeah, that basically, yeah, that's how the crown is in your heart is through the Holy Spirit. And he's the one, you know, that will guide you and speak to you when you have the bad attitudes and your bad attitudes are, you know, showing out when you, you know, speak bad words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, so basically it's really to help you. This book is, you know, straight, uh, um, straight from your crown, uh, um, having life's challenges with grace is basically to, to show you how to really turn your life around to, to get mm -hmm. negativity out of your life, to really get in touch with, with your God or your Jesus and to be able to really move forward in life and, and to do it with grace and not beat that yourself over the head with it, but, you know, really be able to move forward from an area that you're in that you're not not happy with and be able to gracefully get out of that area and then move forward to a life that's going to bring you happiness and joy that's what it seems like this book is mm -hmm. about. yes and i talk a lot in the book about personal growth mm -hmm. um because i mean over the past two or three years you know ever since i started writing books and you know god took me on a new journey and mm -hmm. <laughs> I was kind of, you know, hesitant at first, but then I thought, okay, I'm going to see where this is going to go. But then he is showing me and giving me the words for the books. And so I can tell that I have had personal growth as well as spiritual growth. Right. Because I think I, you know, we have talked before that I never was a person to talk on stages, talk on podcasts, you know, to people I haven't, you know, yeah. personally met. Right. And, and, you know, and God just, I feel like God just helped me to find my voice. Yeah. Because, you know, we all have a story and, yes. you know, we need to tell our story. And so exactly. that's, yeah, that's what I talk about in um, my book. And, and I talk about, um, finding a purpose and you know you have to have some purpose in life and I use the I use the uh symbolism in the book of you know getting in your car and just driving and not knowing where you're going you just right. keep driving down the road you know you're not going to go you're not going to obtain anything with that right. I mean you might see a lot of nice places but you know, where are you going? And, right. and so, you know, with a purpose, you have some goal that you're wanting to reach. Right. And, you and, and you know, and I talk about um, celebrating victories and with the victories, you know, I, I, I'm asking the readers to reach out beyond where you're at right now right which is I guess basically what God did to me, did yeah. to me. and um if there's something that you have been dreaming about if you wanted to start your own business or if you wanted you know to be an auto mechanic or you know whatever whatever your dream is yeah reach reach for it go for it and you know and then when you reach your goal, you can celebrate that victory. And yeah. then, you know, you can expand on that. Right. And, you know, and so, you know, it's a lot of things about our heart. It, it you know, beyond just, you know, that our crown is in our heart and our actions are in our heart. But we have, 
you know, there's confidence that we can, you know, reach into in our right. heart and, you know, just grow as a person. And I talk a lot about looking within yes. and that, that is finding yourself right inside yourself. You know, what do, what do I love? What and do, what makes me happy? What makes me smile? Right. And, you know, just, you know, finding a purpose by doing that. Right. I think that's so important too, because really, it, you know, I think we all have a purpose here in life and it's finding that purpose. And yes, it's, 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 you know, people go, go for, for decades trying to find that purpose in life. And a lot of times that purpose I think is, is right in front of us. We just haven't yet opened our, our heart to it and, and really focus on what the, the signs are. Cause I always feel like we always have little symbols and signs given to us and we just have to be open to it and, and listen to what our, our mind and our body and our heart and our soul is mm -hmm. telling us. And, you know, it will direct us, I think in the right direction. What do you think? Yes. Yes. I, I mean, definitely because, you know, when I, when I started writing this book, you know, it opened up my heart and, you know, and got me to thinking, you know, years ago when I did such and such, or I acted this way, you right. know, toward that person. And, you know, a lot of people, I mean, myself included, probably hmm. does, doesn't really think about what's in your heart. No. And I don't know that I've ever, like I mentioned in the book, I don't know that I have ever until recently looked within to see what really, you know, makes me happy. Right. And, you know, which now I know writing books and, and, you know, talking on podcasts and trying to help people. That's really, I feel like that's my calling from God right. because I love doing that. But, yeah. I, you know, I've always loved helping, helping people, even as, even growing up. Yeah. But, you know, that has a lot to do with how we live our lives. Yes. And whatever is inside of us, we need to find what is inside of us first. We right. need to, we need to learn to love ourselves for who we are. Right. And, you know, we all know, you know, that, God loves us just the way we are. Don't matter, yes. you know, if, you know, what our circumstances are. He loves us no matter what. Mm -hmm. And so we need to learn to love ourselves. Yes, for sure. It's so true. It's so, so true. And I, I do believe that we all have a true calling. We just have to listen to our heart and our heart, I, I believe is always talking to us it really is. It really is. And how did you know when you, when you, when, when that this was your true calling in life? Did you, did it just come to you? Like, did you, did, it was like a light bulb kind of went off or, you know, how did, how did you know that, that writing these books and, and speaking to people and helping people through your knowledge and your expertise was your true calling in life? Like I said, a few minutes ago, I've always loved helping people. I mean, even growing up, I mean, even as a child, you know, the little boy next door, you know, we, you know, I've mentioned before we lived out yeah. on the farm, but, you know, even little kids next door, if they were having, you know, problems with whatever, you know, I would go, yeah. I would try to help them. And, you know, and then as, you know, my adult life, you know, if I knew somebody, you know, in my church needed groceries or needed a ride to the doctor, or whatever, you know, I'm, I'm always there unless I'm working, I'm always there, you know, to, you know, try to help in whatever way I can. And so when God started speaking to me, I guess about three years ago now, and told me that I needed to write, well, he told, first he told me I needed to share my testimony. I need to write my testimony. Right. And so I'm like, okay. And so, you know, I wrote out my testimony and put it on an ebook on Amazon. And so I'm like, okay, you know, I did what you asked God, you know, 
So I'll go on about my life. And then, you know, he, he comes back and he's like, no, no, you know, I have bigger plans for you. And so that's when he basically took me out of the little box that I've been living in. Yeah. And, you know, that's when, you know, I went to California and learned the basics of writing the book. And I was having, you know, to do things on my own as far as ride, um, getting on an airplane by myself and yeah. all that stuff. And so when I wrote my my first um, paperback book, I, I don't count the ebook I wrote as a real book, but um, my first paperback that I wrote, the um, the one when I came back from California, and the unlocking the code to bliss. And as I was writing that, it's just like I love doing this, and so you know I. Thank God every day that I was, you know, that he was giving me the words to put down. And so, you know, after that was written and you know, published and people were buying it. And then um, I uh, wrote the other one. And that's that's when I decide. Well, I, I didn't decide, but that's when I started feeling like this is where God wants me. This yeah. is my mission in life because I can not only write a book, but I can get on podcasts and I can talk about my book and I can also talk about him. And, you know, like I mentioned before, when um, I think we were talking about it before the show, after the divine promises book was published and then I, I got on about 50, I think it was about 15 podcasts in like three months after it was, you know, published. And, you know, at part, the first one I got on and, you know, my publisher is, you know, he is, he's always said, you know, that he was shocked because I had never been in any kind of media, never been on TV, you know, or none of that. And yeah. yet. I got on a podcast and talked for an hour about my book and, you know, and I felt God there with me the whole time. Right. Because it was, it was no way that I could speak without being nervous, you yeah. know, to, I think, I think it, the first one I did was um, authors up on Facebook and it was, it's three ladies. Mm -hmm. And that I mean that that was that was my first one and it went it went really well. And you know, and so you have to do some if you if you feel like you need to do something, you need to go for it, reach out and grab whatever it is that you feel like maybe yeah. God has called you to do or something that you just think you love to do yourself. Yeah. And, you know, and see where it goes. I mean, you might not even like doing what you think you might. Right. And it might be, you know, it might turn into something else. And, you know, it's just like these books. I didn't know that I was going to enjoy, you know, writing and yeah. talking to people. And so, you know, when God takes you out of out of your little comfy box. Right. You know, look out. <laughs> because <laughs> he's usually in a big way yeah for sure <laughs> for sure now if we had to take everything that you you've um talked about today about your new book that's coming out what would you like what message would you like to get across to people what are, what are some of the main um points that you really want people to understand the things that you emphasize in your book that you really want people to really understand and, and also mention you know some of the things that the, they'll be getting from this book when they read this book these are the things that they're going to learn and these are the things that are going to help them when people read my new book the first thing um that i want them to realize is it's sort of like a self-help book, um, you know, how, because I put, I put a lot, uh, a couple of the chapters, you know, I put list in there, you know, like one, two, three, four, this is how you do this. Yeah. And 
so it's a little bit of a self-help help book um and but it's also a little the majority of it is talking about things that are in our heart things that yeah. we could improve in our lives right. and how we can go through life and make it a little better and i guess the main point um that i want the readers to see is that no matter how your life is now it can get better right and all you have to do is to you know is to just say yes i want my life to get better and then take the step forward right to do something to make it better and you know um there's personal growth you know by doing certain things and yeah. you know when i talk about confidence we already talked about you know the purpose but i talk about confidence and, and um having a positive perspective because if you're saying you know oh i've been in this situation you know for 10 years it's no use you know that's not going to get anybody anywhere but in my book i talk about how you can get out of that yes have a positive perspective right. and we don't know what the future holds because only God knows that, but you can take steps to try to advance your life into something better. Yeah. You know, it, and so that would be the two main topics that I want my readers to go away with after they've read my book. I love it. I love it. And can you tell everybody where they can find it again? They can find it on Amazon and any online bookstore um, like Walmart, um, Target, Books a Million, um, Barnes and Noble. And it's also um, going to be in chapters in Canada. And um, you can also um, go straight to my website and it's got links on my website that will take you, you know, to Amazon, you know, where you can order it. And my website is debbieadamsbooks.biz and you can also um, email me directly if they want you know if they have any questions or anything and my email address is debbie at debbieadamsbooks.com I love it oh my god this has been great I'm so glad you came back on the show and I want everyone to know that Debbie has her own podcast on our show. We have the um, the advisor with Stacey Chalemi, but Debbie is part of our podcast community and she has her own podcast. So if you come on, you'll see her own podcast and her podcast is listed worldwide. So on any of the audio or uh, video platforms, you'll see Debbie's podcasts also. So take a look at her podcast and all her previous podcasts that she shared with us because she has such great and inspiring information that you want to listen to that will really motivate you and really get your your mind, body, and spirit starting to think and starting to reevaluate your life and, and how to move forward and to, to be the best you possible. So Debbie, this has been great. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I love this. Yes, it has. Thank you for having me again. Oh, you're very welcome. You have a great day. Thank you. You too.